And we're live from the Meteor in downtown Spaceverse. Well, that's perfect. I'm keeping that as the intro. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Meteor Station Virtual Reality Podcast. It is February of 2023, and the world of VR is a spicy enchilada right now. Some things are all kinds of on fire and other things are pretty amazing, so we'll have a lot of good stuff to get into today. And to go through all that with me is my constant co-host, Gruen. How are you today, Gruen? I'm good. I'm, I'm recovered from about two weeks of illness, so that's fantastic. It is, uh, I, think, I think it was probably the flu, and you're all safe out there. You're not in any danger of being in contact with me, but yeah, it, it was... <laughs> The worst bug I've had in forever, and honestly, worse than COVID, just just awful. So I don't know. There's, I hear it's going around. I hear a lot of people have this same thing. Yeah, I certainly did. I got to spend the majority of January sick, which was pretty great. Everyone liked it. What's not to like about that? I doubled up on the same flu with a stomach bug. I, so, you know, just all sorts of goodies. So... Mm -hmm. Pretty happy to get into February, which is rare because, you know, I'm not February's biggest fan. It's this short, cold month. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, there's not much but, to be happy about about February. Is there? I mean, there's the Super Bowl. That's about it. And, and that's coming up in a week from Sunday. Do you know who's in it? Pop quiz. Probably some football teams. Very true. It is the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs. Who, who are you rooting for? I'm rooting for football. You win. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... Who's the underdog? It should be a good game. I don't know. I haven't looked. It's really easy. Sometimes I'll look on Vegas uh, betting site because that's the best place to see if this is an inside note for anybody. If you ever have friends that like to bet or talk about who's going to win, you can always sound smart if you go to the Las Vegas betting site and you can see if like Kansas City Chiefs, if they're favored by seven points you can feel pretty comfortable picking them because these people in Vegas, they have the magic eight balls because they always seem to know exactly what's going to happen. And they're almost always within a point or two of, of the actual score too. So they can be wrong, but it's a pretty good indicator. And I don't know. I don't know who's favored at this point. I do know a lot of people are pulling for the Eagles. And I don't, well, I mean, there's, yeah, Kansas City is just fun to watch. They, they've got a quarterback that's just really explosive and fun Mahomes explosive now I'm interested he is now we can see uh, I almost tangented into a spoiler so <laughs> I guess we'll have to snip that no he's just fun it's like watching a playground football game he doesn't play like other quarterbacks he'll just be it looks like he's in danger and then he'll just like shuffle the ball to somebody and then they make a touchdown it's it is fun. Nice. Yeah. I choose to believe he just kind of explodes sometimes. Yeah. That's what I want to believe. Anyway, that sounds like a virtual reality kind of thing. Oh, hey, segue. Uh, <laughs> VR stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Any other real life stuff before we get into VR? Well, yeah. Uh, as far as being on fire, there was uh, talk yesterday between you and I about a song you were working on about Groundhog Day. And so this morning on the news, they were talking about Groundhog Day, and every year they do this thing where, I guess it's the beginning of February, um, another awful February thing, but they, they always wait for the groundhog to come out of its hole and see if it's going to see its shadow or not. And this morning they said that they were waiting and waiting and waiting, and it turned out the groundhog was dead in its hole. That's pretty awkward. Not cool. Groundhog. Not ideal. Party foul. Uh, how do you think he feels? So does that mean winter or spring? That means winter will never end. Although he didn't see his shadow, so I think that means we get double early spring. Okay. Yeah, all kinds of didn't see his shadow. Let's go with that. Perfect. Unless it's the shadow of death. <laughs> too far. All right, too dark. <laughs> too far. All right, on to other things that are on fire, because Meta... Meta lost more than $4 billion on the Metaverse last financial quarter, which, you know, that's a thing that I'm still not surprised about because that's what they said they were going to do. <laughs> they're just going to invest and that's what it is. But there are all these sensational articles all the time about Meta doing bad. Oh, bad. And it's the same story as usual for me where it's like, call them out when they're actually doing bad. Like they do things that are not good, but this well, is... 
fine. They they knew this was an investment. Yeah, they so for the year they lost 13.7 billion. Yeah, but they're also like overall they're net profitable by a lot. Like last quarter they were up 4.652 billion overall thanks to, you know, the Facebook memes or whatever. So oh, Okay. Well, this is just for the VR part of it that they lost 13.7, which is probably not a good thing for the department head trying to justify their department, but it is cool that they're still in it and doubling down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and like I said, they knew this was an investment and I, I just think people are just going for all this clickbaity stuff of, look, Meta, no one likes Meta and they're doing bad. <laughs> it's like, Okay, but yeah. would we rather have this or would we rather not have this? Because I'd rather have them dumping money in the VR space and I still would rather prioritize other groups. But in similar news, though, uh, since I have already harped on that point before in previous podcasts, an actual meta bad thing, they are shutting down Echo VR. It's like the number one VR esport and they're just kind of killing it, which is very unfortunate because it seems pretty sweet. Yeah, so why do, why are they shutting that down, do you think? Is it because it's free? Uh, I didn't see a good reason. I assume they just aren't able to sustain it for one reason or another i think it's because it's free why why wouldn't they just start charging people but it, it is a free game i'm almost positive and they're throwing resources at it to keep it going so if you got to make a cut somewhere seems like that's a logical cut except the, it is one of the games that i have played i'm not super crazy about it because the nausea factor but it, it's a lot of people do like it and you know why not see if you can charge i know that would that would create a firestorm all these people like what you're gonna charge me for a free game yeah but i i think there is a reasonable way to do it and i do kind of agree actually i or not kind of agree i completely agree instead of charging for what already exists they should lean into it like this is a well-liked game and people say you know there's not quite enough to do in here oh hey let's add more to do that you can opt to pay for the existing game is still free and there's more there's better there's you know advanced features you could you know do the skins like a bunch of other games do or whatever yeah. and monetize it that way but <laughs> and that just feels very intuitive but they're just like nope delete yeah maybe maybe you charge for an invincibility cloak <laughs> oh that sounds like pay to win but you know <laughs> Why not? I guess that's one, make some money. one way to do it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that's one of the things that actually felt fiery in the VR space to me because that is a really well-liked game. And I've tried to play it, and it was kind of rough getting it to work with the Vive. But what I was able to try with it, it really cool. It's a pretty solid game. So pretty yeah. sad to see that one go. Yeah. But in a very similar vein, Microsoft is shutting down the alt space. What? Did you know about that? No. Yep. Alt space getting shut down. Wow. I think I told you the last time I tried to get in there, it was so difficult to get in, and I've been in there before, but it was it it seems like every time I get in it wants me to prove my credentials and log in again. And so the last time I honestly I just gave up. I I was like, Oh forget it and I got out. And I had this thought, like, I could tell there weren't many people in there because you can see how many people are in each room or, you know, and there just were not many people at all. So I did have that thought, like, this thing is in trouble. Yeah, agreed. And even for us, we do this podcast. It was very easily one of the contenders, and we have a lot of complaints about VR chat, and yet here we are here instead of alt space. Ooh. You know, it's like if there's not enough to drive people over there, then is what it is. Yeah. And so I guess this is a good thing for us that we weren't somehow married to alt space and we didn't have to make a big change. But VR chat made the news and I really hate to talk about this, but it's it's like this really weird uh, side of VR chat. I don't want to know anything about, but there's <laughs> I don't know the best way to say this. Yeah. So this part of VR chat, which is beep. And then everybody is like into that because beep is part of the internet. <laughs> that sounds like incredibly informative stuff from us. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going from fire toward the good side of things. So not necessarily fire, but you know, approaching neutral. Um, it sounds like Apple's gonna be doing a follow-up lower cost version, but it's gonna be delayed. So it'll be somewhere 2024 or 2025, where it's this AR VR platform or AR VR headset. 
So interesting. So that it makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make a lot of sense that they would announce it because anybody that's going to sit on the sidelines and wait, it now has a reason to sit on the sidelines and wait. But that is normally what they do anyway. They come out with this high price thing that people want because it's Apple. And then later they're going to either reduce the price of that thing or come out with something else. But that's weird that they would announce it in advance. Maybe they've just gotten a lot of flack about the pricing and they had to address it. Maybe. Yeah. I do like that they're leaning into the mixed reality thing where it's AR or VR because it's, for the most part, it does make sense to have them be different. But at the same time, it does make sense to have them be the same as well, where it's, you know, these lenses, like the AR capabilities can enhance VR, like what we've talked about, the easiest example being the room set up with the Quest, that kind of thing. Very intuitive, makes a lot of sense for the VR space, all that. And so similar hardware needs, all that kind of thing. So being able to just combine it together and have all that functionality in one headset, I like it. I'm yeah, in. it does give some, what I'm thinking and hoping is that it this gives credibility to VR for business. And not that there's no solution out there for business right now at all, there are, but this is more of a mainstream potential. There's probably a lot of companies that are like, yeah, I don't want to put a toy on somebody's head and tell them this is our professional thing. And when Apple comes out with their product, I'm thinking, you know, is it just because of the price or because it's the name Apple or maybe the look of what they put out? But maybe some more companies will go, yeah, this is doable for us now. This is what for us now? It's doable. This is something we can uh, jump doable. into yeah. because it's Apple and because it's more professional and it's, it's not a PS. VR 2 right. slam. Yeah. No, PSVR 2 seems solid. What did you hear about PSVR 2? Oh, just slam it for me. Yeah, the the ex uh, what, chief technical officer, John Carmack from Meta. And I didn't realize he had co-created Doom. Anyway, so then he's part of Meta, and he left Meta because he felt like there it was just this mess as far as an organization. He likes everything they did and that they accomplished with Quest 2 and, you know, technically and price point and all that. But he's, he's giving the sound of doom to the PSVR 2 because he, I think it's mostly about the price. He likes their technology, but the fact that you're going to be asking probably mostly the younger folks to invest about a thousand bucks by the time they get what they need to do VR in PSVR. He, he doesn't think the price point's going to work. So he has sounded that alarm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Time will tell. Yeah. You got to listen to the voice of doom. <laughs> like what you did there. I see it. I see what you did and I like it. You may take your bow. Yep. But talking about AR, uh, I did see, and I did not look into it much further, but I did see that Meta is coming out with AR glasses, and that, that'll that be another interesting entry, depending what they are uh, hoping to, to provide with that. But one of the car manufacturers, Audi, had an article that they are coming out with this new car. It's, a, it's their electric car, one of, I don't know how many they have, but an electric car, and some of the console controls you can't see unless you have the AR glasses on. So if you have AR glasses, you've got these extra controls. Spiffy. Cool. Yeah, so that's yeah. common. You know, that's just uh, that's Minority Report, Tom Cruise movie. It's just that all over. There's <laughs> going to be so many things. Or, or Free Guy, we've talked about that. You know, you put on the glasses and, and you've got this whole world of things you can see that other people cannot. Yeah. I do think that would be quite a lot of fun. I mean, I wouldn't be upset about turning life into a video game. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe... In this town that, that I'm in, the suburb, maybe we do that. Maybe we just make some kind of free guy glasses. We'll have to come up with the name because we probably couldn't use free guy glasses. But if we could make the city, because it's not a big one, if we make the city like AR ready and you put the glasses on and can see all this extra stuff just like in the game, that'd be fun. Could be the first AR city in the country. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
that would be nice. I think just generally just having it generically work anywhere, just setting it up so that it just recognizes like this is this thing, this is that thing. You've gained XP, you walked an old lady across the street, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> like uh, you just can wear it anywhere and it'll just figure it out and do cool things for you. Yeah. I mean it would make it would make a lot of sense just to have it team up with things like Google Maps and, and Google Street and all that. And then you can see what each place is and, and maybe a little blurb about each place that you're walking past. And there's probably other sites that you could pull in that would give you more detail and info about, about the locations and cool things to see and, yeah, historical data. Indeed. Well, do you have any other fiery news or should I move us into straight neutral news? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so yeah, fiery news. Fiery news is uh, Meta was going to purchase that company you're talking about, an exercise program, which I have used. It's Supernatural, and they're made by a, its parent company is Within, and that's who they're talking about buying. And the FTC was trying to block it because of Monopoly and all this, and a judge said, nope, they can go ahead and buy it. And so they're buying it for $400 million, which when you lose $13.7 on that department is really nothing. It's a <laughs> drop in the bucket. Yeah. You know, and it is a cool program. Made up numbers in a spreadsheet. Yeah, I think Within is, is an interesting company. It's probably a good acquisition, probably a great acquisition. Seems like, a, I mean, with the kind of numbers that we hear these days, it seems like a reasonable number even. And if they can expand on this supernatural to, to do more, you know, it is a good program. I like it, but it wasn't enough for me to do long term. And, you know, they, they have a lot of music that goes with it. But if it doesn't have, you know, like a lot of the music I just wasn't interested in, I, it's it's a lot of the same thing. It's it's either you're using bats, you know, like baseball bats to hit targets or you're punching like a boxing routine. And they have other things, but they'll probably expand it. And I wonder how much they're making already. If they're spending $400 million, I wonder, because it's a subscription service. And so they have to be making some decent money, probably not $400 million a year. Yeah, I think there's some calculation, or there's definitely a calculation on it. I just don't know how that works, but yeah. We make this much per year, so this is the value the bid should be blah 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 big company numbers we're small fries we don't know that stuff <laughs> right for for x number of dollars you can have this meteor whoa what would be your price tag 400 million dollars <laughs> No, no, come on. Let's make it a bargain. Three hundred ninety-nine million dollars. You can have this meteor. Ooh, already Savings. giving it to him. You're basically giving it away now. Right. Jeez. Right. I'll take the hit on the extra mill. All right. Yeah, that's coming out of your side. Yeah. So give me some positives. Well, we got to work our way there. So oh. I, I guess this is a little bit positive, but um, so. Apple was saying that they expect immersive video watching to be a core feature of their Reality Pro, which to us feels like pretty good news because uh, that's a lot of what we do is creating immersive video. So they'll be flooring potential partners like uh, Disney and Dolby and we'll see who else. Maybe us, we'll see. No, we, we should probably make more content if we want to talk to Apple, but <laughs> I thought that was kind of interesting that they would say that because that has seemed like kind of a low priority thus far to a lot of groups. So that was hmm. kind of a pleasant surprise. Yeah, it's interesting they're talking to Disney because Apple and Disney are competitors out there in the in the view space. Uh, I mean, kind of. It feels like those ones coexist pretty well. Maybe better than I thought, but yeah. I don't know that they're like fierce competitors, but when you are looking where you're going to spend your 10 or 11 dollars a month you you've got apple and you've got disney over here and you've got hbo and you got you got all your choices and they're two separate ones maybe they're coming together that'd be interesting true that so another thing i'd seen that was just somewhat interesting so ant vr was a vr startup in the early days that kind of disappeared but they're back with basically the technology to instantly switch between ar and vr which is kind of interesting because that's where we we're just talking about how the apple headsets are trying to set themselves up but instead of actually making the headset themselves they're hoping that some other group will actually make the headsets and just utilize their technology which was an interesting tactic to me okay so i wonder why they don't want to Put it together. We've got the technology, but we don't really feel like 
taking it the extra step. But okay, it, it does make mm-hmm. sense if you can get a lot of money for just the technology and partner with somebody. I wonder who would step up. It it does seem like this is the logical thing to be able to change from VR to AR and back. And that's what I was hoping Apple w- was going to do. But they are coming out with two different things, the AR glasses and the VR headset. So I don't think they are doing that. But they also are going to do the combined mixed reality headset. So if they already have the technology, then Ant is probably barking up the wrong tree. Oh, I, I I was just hypothesizing. I don't know if who they're going after. They just invented this cool technology and are hoping someone utilizes it and are hoping some company will license what they've developed. So right. I don't know their full plan. I just saw A and I saw B and was like, huh, maybe, but who knows? Just slightly interesting. Yeah. Not a big thing. Yeah. No, it, it, it could be just the beginning of something that three years from now you go, see, I was the first to report this. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but moving along since, yeah, that one's not that mind-boggling. So Valve got a patent for a low-latency, interruption-resistant PC to VR device set up. So that sounds pretty sweet, and maybe they're just dibsing technology or hoping to cash in in the future, but to me that's a good time for optimism that they're going to have a good, awesome headset coming out. Okay, I heard what you said. Bring it down a level. So to make it so that your headset can just be this standalone thing with the power of PC VR, you would need it to transmit data incredibly fast or else it would be laggy and uh, cause motion sickness or have other issues. So whatever technology they've patented seems like it makes it plausible that you can have PC VR, but with a standalone device, like sort of like a Quest 2, where you just put it on and get going um, and can run more powerful games. Okay. And and it is true that it, it's got to be a challenge. And when we look back in five or 10 years and, and we've got these headsets that do everything seamlessly, it's going to be nice but right now it's got to be a challenge for these programmers and developers to have something like that so like the quest 2 they did a good job but i can definitely tell the difference between quest 2 and my rift the rift is directly connected it has a lot more power even though they've dropped it and don't support it and it's falling apart piece by piece (laughs) but when i do something in quest 2 i can tell i'm like a half second behind all the time there's definitely a it's it's not the regular kind of lag where you are jumping around and skipping and and that kind of thing it's it's a lag where you don't immediately get the same input that you do on the rift and when i say the rift is falling apart i'm i'm not kidding i am it's like every week a different piece just falls off of it (laughs) it is definitely end of life i'm not sure how much longer i'm going to be able to keep that thing yikes yeah well hopefully whatever this thing valve is cooking up comes out soon so we can jump on board that because i like i've said before i'm pretty happy with my vive but yeah it is pretty outdated at this point and wouldn't hate a better display and all that and so whatever this thing is i'm interested in hearing a bit more i guess that can bring us to generally good stuff so one thing i noticed is kind of interesting is a lot of the bad news is coming from these big companies and a lot of the good news is coming from little indie groups which i don't know do what you want with that but among those small fries with good news is us we made this vr film festival so we made our own platform and have this meteor station virtual reality film festival we're in talks with film freeway because they have a rule where it can't have a public listing if it's online only which is pretty frustrating since it's a virtual venue which makes a lot of sense because it can like the whole point of this thing is it can be used to watch virtual reality stuff better than you could in person because the best thing you could do in person is have everyone on their own headset whereas this is designed to have everyone in their headset to watch all these vr films but anyway so Uh, It's currently a private listing, but uh, we'll have it in our descriptions of our videos and all that. But yeah, anyway, it's still exciting stuff for us. Yeah, I like it because there there is a need for more people to jump in and get these things made, but also get them seen. And I think we can do that. But that's that's crazy that they have to have. Whoa, I'm drifting. 
my rift is breaking. So it's crazy that they're making us have a physical spot that is uh, not what virtual reality is about. Hopefully they make an exception. And if not, what we'll do is we'll rent out the local bowling alley. Or <laughs> and at the bowling alley, you can come down and you can put on your headset and, and watch a couple of the best movies. Maybe the maybe the winners could be seen in person. Uh, maybe we should. I... It is so disappointing because it is just such an outdated philosophy. Like, uh, I would have thought that... So there were some exceptions made during COVID and all that where online was able to be listed because it's like these festivals would have been held in person, but they can't be. And so a lot of groups evolved with the times and some didn't, it seems. So a little yeah. disappointing, but I, I don't see how virtual reality festivals that are held in VR or anything but... I deal so maybe yeah. eventually that'll catch up but anyway overall yeah. it's exciting news so i mean the potential is so much bigger that it's you know it's going to be hard to beat somebody like can festival but it it is there's a much bigger potential than the the small town uh festivals that are out there just because you could have people from all over the world watching and seeing your film and, and that's what people want is exposure. And you may not get that in a small town in Oklahoma, but you can get that online. You can have, you, you just, all you need is that one right person to see it. And I think we have the potential of, of exposing somebody's film to to that right person that could take it to the next level or, or see their work and go, you know what, that was great, but I want you to do this. So right. maybe yeah. Film Freeway is going to see the light. We'll uh, wait for that. And if not, we'll jump over to Film Highway. <laughs> we'll play Film Frogger until we get to wherever <laughs> we need to go. I Honestly, I don't hate your idea about the bowling alley because the idea would still be to get the the virtual reality event to be the main thing but i mean having an in-person thing could be fun just have a few people that are local or interested in vr show up and have a good time see some cool films it actually might be a pretty cool idea and a, like a very solid workaround we'll have to talk about that yeah let us know what you think internet yeah let's chat offline <laughs> all right uh well some other good news um so uh, this is made by an indie developer, uh, OpenBrush version 2.0 got released and it's just completely free. It's one of those VR art tools and it looks really cool. It's got mixed reality and little fun thing to throw in here. Just something cool people are making and releasing. It's Wow, so is that on all platforms, do you know? I think it probably is. Honestly, that that is something that I would love is because I like to paint and, and we did that project of the mural and we need to do some more of those and the but the idea of being able to paint in vr is so creative but then if we can put it out and have maybe like a 3d printer or a or just even a normal printing process that could make it look like an actual painting you can put on your wall but it was created in vr definitely i'm in i'm downloading that thing and it's free there you go yeah exactly my, my favorite what's not to like yeah it's very cool well i heard heard I didn't hear this. I actually read it. Samsung, Google, and Qualcomm are teaming up for a mixed reality platform. And that's probably in response to Apple that they feel like, okay, let's let's get serious about this. And I say, uh, you know, Apple obviously is going to make waves out there. and and But that's a pretty big team. Those three companies teaming up to make a mixed reality platform. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So my guess is it's going to be called QualSamGul. Ooh, that really rolls off the tongue. That's nice. Yeah. Maybe Sam Goocom. I don't know. I, I like Sam Goocom. That that sounds pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that. I mean, three big industry leaders teaming up to make it. That Anything that advances this technology for us is great. And that, that to me, even though Meta lost 13.7, this is a shot in the arm. This is, this is good news. Very true. My other things are largely game related. I saw that the Half-Life 2 VR guys or the mod makers for it are adding VR for episode one of Half-Life 2, which is basically just a continuation of the Half-Life 2 story. So I still haven't, I, I, like I said, I was sick all of January. I barely got to touch VR in January, but 
I'm very interested in trying the Half-Life 2 VR mod, and now I'm excited to also get to try Half-Life 2 Episode 1 in VR. So I have it downloaded, and more and more good stuff is coming our way, sounds like. But people have likened this to the quality of Half-Life Alex, so that's a very, very, very high bar. So we'll have to see if it gets anywhere near that. But hey, if it gets anywhere near it, I will be so happy. That will be very fun. Cool. Yeah. You made me think of something that I thought was funny, and I didn't tell you about this, but when I was sick, at the worst point, I didn't even want to get out of bed. So I'm laying in bed, and I'm thinking, I am so bored. And I grabbed the Quest 2, and I thought, I wonder if there's a way to set it so that I can play laying down. And, of course, you're just looking at the sky. There's no way to make it think that you're standing up when you're laying down. And that's something that maybe another platform has that ability, but they did not. And it was very frustrating, and I didn't do it for more than a couple minutes. But, you know, if you could set the floor as, really, it's not the floor, it's the end of your bed or wherever you're laying. And if you think about it, there's a lot of people that probably could use VR that are in a situation where they they're not able to be upright and and it would allow them to do the things we talk about like travel and and see places they've never been to so why do you have to be sitting up or standing up they they need to make that adjustment yeah but it was pretty funny a very good point to try and run around looking at the sky <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Just that, running into that walls. That was pretty good. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. There, there are, a, I did see a couple, these games are more my speed, and one is not a game, but the, of course, VR Pickleball is out, and, uh, and, and it was only a matter of time. It's the fastest growing sport in the country, and it's not just for old people anymore. Everybody's playing it. There's, there's leagues. It's, crazy and it's fast i mean it's it you have to have a fast reaction time because your antennas you're way back from each other and you've got a little bit of time to react unless you're playing a professional but in pickleball even if you're not professional and you're standing 15 feet from each other that ball's coming at you you got to react pretty quick so it's a fun game i haven't mastered it but i do need to check out this i just saw that this came out and i need to check it out any interest over there yeah yeah i would definitely play i played pickleball in real life and liked it way more than i thought i might it was actually really fun so yeah i'd play okay pickle boy i will absolutely be breaking the light at some point playing it but you know <laughs> it's yeah. inevitable i'm yeah. surprised i haven't already I, i'm always so aware of my lights because i'm very tall and uh yeah yeah it, it's inevitable something's gonna break the the other thing is the vr diving and this this made the news because of the the way they did it and and i don't really know how they put these things together but they it really is like one of the things that i think would be super interesting is scuba diving but i'm not gonna do it and i didn't even do it when i was of the age that you think you're invincible because there, it it is dangerous and the people that scuba dive are gonna go what no it's fine as long as you know what you're doing and that's true, but do you want to take the time to learn what you're doing? Where in VR, this new VR diving program lets you really feel like you're swimming under the water, under the ocean or wherever that they can, I guess it's a combination of camera and unity and whatever else they use because you can pick things up and those things are not just filmed. So, and it's very realistic, like just all I did was watch the video about it, but it was, you pop your head out of the water, you can go down, you can swim fast, slow. It, it just, I think a way for people to scuba dive without taking the risk. Yeah. That does sound pretty fun, depending on how realistic it looks. I would try very, it, yeah. looks very realistic. That's why it made the news. I think if it was something I put together with drawings <laughs> and uh, and bad graphics, they wouldn't have made the news. True. Very valid point. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would do that. We can have a claustrophobia simulator together doing underwater spelunking. Spelunking? Is it spelunking? Uh, no. Yeah, I think it's spelled spree lunking, but I don't think they say that. 
Spelunking, yeah. Yeah, I'm super familiar with it because I all kinds of love going into tight spaces underwater. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's not just underwater. Even just watching people do those on land, I'm just like, oh, I, I'm feeling claustrophobic just looking at you. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to hard nope out of all that. But in VR, we could see what it's like and then never actually do it. Right. Yay, VR. Uh, so I've got a couple of things that are, they, they stood out to me as interesting, but I honestly don't fully understand them. The first of which is uh, you can play the original NES Zelda in VR thanks to Doom. And I don't know exactly how, so I assume it's like the old Doom engine being taken into VR that's like however that same setup is, is how they're doing it. And that's why it's thanks to Doom. But it just stood out to me as, I mean, the original NES Zelda in VR, like that's a throwback. That's that's old school. So it, it could be pretty fun. I doubt it's, I, I doubt it's going to be like into Half-Life Alex, let's say, but <laughs> I just thought that was interesting. It's probably fun to derp around in it for a little bit. And the other thing I saw that I, I guess I, it's not that I don't understand it. It's I don't really know what this would be without actually getting to see it in person. But some researchers over at MIT and some other universities across the world have supposedly figured out some way to make VR headsets more realistic. And so it's one thing they said about it is you could have a completely immersive experience and wouldn't be able to distinguish virtual reality from reality. And that's those are some big words. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a lot of talk right there, but kind of like what I was saying for if the Half-Life 2 VR is anywhere near Half-Life Alex VR, if this thing is anywhere near that good of quality, like even if it falls short, it's still sounding pretty good. So I guess we'll have to see what that technology does for us in the future. Indeed. Yes. Okay. So I've got a question for you. What game or games or even just activity, what thing would you like to see in VR? That is the easiest question in the entire world. I agree. And what's so disappointing is it, in theory, was supposed to have VR support. Because my answer is art. Mm. Uh, it's this survival dinosaur game where you can tame dinosaurs. It looks gorgeous. It's so fun. It's one of those games that has a huge love-hate relationship where it's like someone has 100,000 hours played and says, never play this. <laughs> you know, oh. uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. But uh, it's it's really fun. And it was supposed to have VR support, but it never really did. So I've, I've definitely played, that. I've played Ark, but I, I don't in VR and I don't think it's the same one you're talking about this this one you're on a big boat and you have to collect two of every animal and get them on the boat without them leaving the boat <laughs> oh yeah yeah same game okay yeah right um, <laughs> no I thought you were gonna say the same thing as me which is Mario Kart so Mario Kart to me would be the number one thing I would I would definitely buy immediately as long as it is not gonna make me throw up constantly. The the other thing I'd like to see is Joust, the old game Joust, where you could be on ostriches and fighting each other. That would be a blast. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, any others for you, Pac-Man? Uh, you know, I'm just gonna go full circle again and go back to one of the other things that I'm harping on over the years. There needs to be the Pokemon MMO and it needs to have VR. Mm. I grew up with it. It's just one of those fun games where I can chill and chat with my friends playing this thing. It's, you know, just mindlessly enjoyable, and <laughs> that would be pretty fun, just getting to run around a Pokemon world and catch them all. Yeah, I don't even play or understand that thing, but it, it does seem like 100% that that should be available in VR. You know, if, if the little Pikachu guy could pop up behind the chair and you could grab him and throw him in your box right now, that'd be fun. <laughs> exactly. That's all the game is just picking up and throwing Pikachu. <laughs> no, throwing defenseless little animals in a box, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly right. And making them fight each other. Oh yeah. my, this is, a, this is a dark game. It's the dark yeah, arts. for kids. <laughs> Wonderful. Any hoodles. <laughs> Do you have anything else or should we wrap her up? So I just want to say that we've got one year 
before the festival. It's going to be January of 2024, and it's going to be big because it's going to be the last fun thing before the election year, and all that crazy election <laughs> stuff starts right afterwards. So this is your last hurrah before all that nuttiness. But we do have a year, so start making your films, and, and we're going to do this. And so we just will let you know as soon as it's available on Film Freeway. But in the meantime, feel free to message us, and we'll take it from there. But I, yeah, I think it's it's going to be great to see what gets sent in. Yeah, I completely agree. And yeah, it's a fun platform. And basically, the more support for it we get, the more we're able to build it out and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, you've seen what we do. We just are determined, crazy people. So we just kind of make stuff happen one way or another. So here we go. We're making another fun, cool thing happen for the VR space. So look forward to it. And we'll see you there in 2024. And we'll see you next month here on The Meteor. Later.